Joseph Fourier, at the beginning of the 19th century, for the first time, showed what we now call the greenhouse effect. At the time, he was trying to understand the physical phenomena on the Earth with an assumption at the time, according to which the Earth was warmed from the inside. It had a sort of fireball inside, which then uh, heated up the surface and played an essential role on the surface temperature. But by measuring temperature differences, temperature gradients in the ground, in the coal mines, he understood and evidenced the fact that the heat coming from the center of the earth played a negligible role on the surface temperature, which was subsequently confirmed by a number of other measurements. And therefore, he understood that if the Earth was not warmed from the inside, then something on the outside was at play, an exchange between the Earth and the Sun and the Earth and the space. What was the conceptual idea that he uh, then came up with, that the Earth was uh, heated up by uh, solar radiations, which heated up the, the Earth, which then released infrared rays, lost the energy received from the Sun in the form of infrared rays, and temperatures adjusted so that the Earth would lose as much en energy as it received. This framework, this concept, is still valid for the Earth and a number of planets. But as far as the Earth is concerned, the uh, solar energy lands on Earth, and about one third is reflected back into space, partly by the clouds and partly by the deserts or very light surfaces such as snow. The part that is absorbed by the Earth is used to heat up the Earth. Then the energy gets lost, sent back into the atmosphere. It warms up the atmosphere, and the atmosphere itself cools down by uh, releasing infrared uh, rays into the space. Now, if one were to look at the Earth from a satellite, for instance, then one would see that uh, the Earth receives 240 uh, watts per square meter of uh, solar energy and loses the same quantity of energy in the form of um, infrared rays. Now, if we look at the infrared energy released by the Earth's surface, we observe that the uh, energy is 390 watts per square meter, approximately. Therefore, the energy released by the Earth's surface is much greater than the energy, than the energy lost at the top of the atmosphere. Therefore, infrared rays are trapped by the atmosphere, and this is what we call the greenhouse effect. In order to explain this uh, concept, we may try and understand how an ideal window pane would behave, one that would not absorb solar rays, but would, uh, would absorb solar rays and not infrareds, and how a plate located under it would behave. The plate heated up by the sun, if it receives a given quantity of energy, say one unit, it's going to lose the same quantity of energy by releasing infrared rays. Now, the lost energy goes upwards to heat up the window pane, which will lose the energy by releasing infrared rays, and half upwards, half downwards, the upwards going energy is lost into space and the downwards going energy will heat up the surface of the plate, will release more infrared rays, which in turn will be absorbed by the window, which will heat up and will release again half of the energy upwards and half of the energy downwards. And the downwards release energy will be absorbed by the plate underneath, etc. And if we sum up all of this, we see that the uh, solar energy which lands on the window is lost by the window, so there is uh, heat being preserved, conserved, but the surface underneath, because of the uh, ray, rays being emitted upwards and downwards, the surface will not release one but two units, and the temperature will be increased by the greenhouse effect. All of this may be calculated in a very accurate way on Earth. We are familiar with the number of properties and gases. Some gases absorb infrared rays. We are capable of uh, calculating the radiative transfer equation and take measurements. 
the surface will release 390 watts per square meter, and only uh, 240 will be released. So the difference will be trapped by the greenhouse effect. And we can show that water vapor is the main greenhouse effect gas, 60% approximately of the greenhouse effect. Then uh, CO2 is the second gas for about one quarter, and the rest will be divided between the other gases such as ozone, nitrous oxide, and methane, and a number of other less important gases. The main results, or rather, the uh, greenhouse effect is due to mostly water vapor, more than half, and then the rest is basically accounted for by um, CO2. In the example earlier, we took a window which uh, totally absorbed I infrared rays above a surface, and we can wonder, one may wonder, well, this greenhouse effect, is it maximum? If we consider that the window will absorb part of the infrared, or could it be increased? Well, the window cannot absorb more than it already absorbs in terms of infrared rays because it absorbs 100%. But we can increase the greenhouse effect by adding a second window on top of the first window pane. I'm not, I won't go into too many details, but you'll understand easily that if we, if we add the second window, all the exchanges that I've already described but will happen between the two window panes, and therefore we will add some greenhouse effect, and the same applies if we add a third and a fourth window pane. Why am I telling you this? Because the uh, atmosphere absorbent changes with the CO2 concentration, and for a very low concentration, much lower than today, absorption will increase if we increase the uh, CO2 concentration. If we take a concentration such as the one we have today, 380, 400 ppm, absorption will increase a little bit, but not so much. Calculations have shown that absorption doesn't change much, and yet it changes the radiative effect. Why is that? Well, as I have just explained, if there is a single window pane, there will be a kind of greenhouse effect. There seems to be a saturation. But if we add a second window pane on top of the first one, the greenhouse effect will increase. And for CO2, it means that by increasing the CO2 concentration, the bottom part of the atmosphere will not play an essential role. The top part of the atmosphere will play an essential role. The greenhouse effect at the top of the atmosphere will control the situation. And therefore, greenhouse effect will increase when CO2 concentrations increase. It may sound as a paradox, but scientists have understood it, and they have understood that there is no maximum greenhouse effect as far as CO2 is concerned. There is a saturation effect in the absorption, but not in the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is a well-understood physical phenomenon, well-studied, well-observed. We measure infrared spectrum every day on the surface of the Earth, but also in space. We can calculate everything we need to calculate with models and uh, satellite observations made on the surface. So the physical phenomenon is well known. It doesn't mean it's easy. I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying it, obviously, for you. But it's uh, much more complex. But it's well known and well studied. The greenhouse effect makes you think about the greenhouses used to grow vegetables. But everything that happens in the atmosphere is really much different than what would happen in a real greenhouse. So there is an analogy, uh, but it's mainly terminology that will lead, that, that will be misleading, really. It causes confusion. Everything I'm telling you is well established, and if we increase the greenhouse effect by increasing CO2 concentrations or when the CO2 of other gases uh, increases, such as uh, water vapor, the greenhouse effect will increase. This is well understood. But there are scientific questions which we need to ask. How do we quantify the warming, the climate warming, and the consequences of uh, climate uh, warming on the distribution of winds and climatic uh, phenomena and water vapor? These are open scientific questions. The uh, radiative uh, exchanges are well understood, and now we know that we are looking at a very well understood and confirmed cl climatic and physical phenomenon.